Hello, it's Paul with Logix Magazine. Today we're going to talk about your first hydraulic circuit. We're going to introduce a few principles and we're going to do it in simulation. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. All right, so what we have is a basic hydraulic circuit. Okay, there's a two uh, cylinder hydraulic circuit. So what we have is our hydraulic supply, okay, pressure supply, simulating our uh, pumps. Here we have a pressure gauge. Here is our tank right here. So this is our circuits going to the tank. We have a two wave or a two position four way valve right here. We have a um, flow meter right here. We have a um, cylinder uh, actuator right here. Excuse me. We have um, a couple of limit switches or mechanical position sensors. Okay. And we have another pressure gauge right here, and we have a uh, flow controller right here. So that's pretty much our circuit. This is our start button. We have everything the same over here, except for we have a flow control uh, controller on our cylinder A circuit and not on our cylinder B circuit. So essentially everything else is uh, the same, all right? So let's go ahead and simulate our circuit. One thing I wanted to do is I wanted to... Uh, wanted to um, I'm going to bring this up a little bit so that this initial demo goes quick and then we'll break it down for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and start our simulation. And there's our actuator. It's extending, hitting our position sensor. Then cylinder B takes over and it extends to the proximity switch here. And then cycles back from position A back to, uh, to B and back to A again. And then cylinder A goes into retract here. Okay. So that is our circuit. Pretty simple, right? Okay. Now, what you've seen is I changed the uh, rated flow, 110 gallons per minute. Now, what I wanted to share with you was a couple of basic principles, right? Um. The power sub the, the the hydraulic supply creates flow. All right, so we'll demonstrate this here real quick, and I'll show you a very important principle here to understand. So we're gonna we're gonna energize our circuit, and we're at hundred and seven and three quarters gallons per minute. Okay, all right. So we're gonna stop this now. That's at that's at 110 gallons, which right now the circuit will only run 110 gallon. So now if I bring that down, right, to 20 gallons a minute, right? Let's slow this system down, but let's look at what our flow rate is, right? So let's cycle this cylinder B back to cylinder. Okay. So the A is energized. Now we know we got 19.94 gallons per minute, right? So big difference. I'll show you again, all right? 19. Now I'm going to go up to 110, the, the most that we can run our circuit at. We're going to simulate this, and we're at 107. Very important. All I did was change the uh, supply side, right? The, pre the the hydraulic pressure source, 110 gallons per minute, and that uh, that changes our our flow. This is a flow meter. All right. So this is a very important principle in hydraulics circuits. Right. All right. Now. What can change? What, what's the next important principle? Resistance to flow will create pressure. All right, so let's go ahead and run our circuit. And we're, let's start. We're at 357.9 PSI, right? All right, so let's stop our simulation. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a little resistance to our uh, 
controller here, right? So I will be we'll go down to 20 gallons per minute. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cycle our circuit. And that's going there back to A and 357 PSI. Okay. So now what did that tell us? All right. Let's stop this again. Let's, well, let's let it run a minute or two. We we'll just want to see what's going on here. Okay. So on the retract, 27 uh, PSI, right? On In that circuit right there. Going backwards, you can see our actuator is moving really, really slow, right? So we're affecting speed as well. All right, so we have 27, right? Now, at 20 gallons per minute, if I bring this up to, I believe it's a maximum of 110, we're going to measure our flow, our, our pressure, right? It's a pressure indicator. And that's 357 moving from A to B. And we'll wait for cylinder B to retract. And then we'll measure on the retract side as well. All right. So we can match our two numbers. Remember, it was 27 a minute ago. And now we're retracting. Now it's 158. All right. Now, what happened here? What is the principle we're trying to, what, am I, what is it that I'm trying to share with you? All right, Resistant, cre resistance creates pressure, all right? So the, 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 the volume hasn't changed, but the resistance to that volume has changed, and that has, increased, that has created pressure. Very important principle. Very important. If you don't get that, then then you're gonna have, you're gonna struggle when when designing circuits and troubleshooting them. Very important principle. All right. So another principle. Now we, what we did is so far we've talked about the fact that um, our our supply side will will affect our flow. Right. The more or less of our supply uh, that creates flow. Flow is very important. Okay. Flow does not necessarily uh, does not um, dictate pressure, okay? It will affect it a little bit. You'll see that on some meters, right? Some measurements, but it, it, it really doesn't impact the pressure. It's not, that's not where pressure is coming from. But let's go ahead and look at um, speed, right? So if we affect the flow, right, we're going to increase our, our speed. So where do we get our flow from, right? We're going to get it from our supply side, right? So now, all right, uh, let's let's see how to do this. So, all right, we got 110 and uh, 110 gallons per minute, right? All right, so now let's look at our speed. Watch our speed and at 110 gallons per minute. Okay, and we're going to start our circuit. All right. Pretty good speed. I mean, that's that thing's hustling out there, right? For this level of circuit. Okay, and we're at 110 gallons per minute on cylinder B as well. Okay, so we're retracting that. Same thing, 110 gallons per minute. 110 gallons per minute on cylinder A and retract. What we're going to do on the next uh, cycle is we're going to change our flow. Right, Eric. So um, we're going to change our supply side, right, our source, and that's going to affect our flow, which is going to affect our speed. So I hope some of this is making sense to you. We're going to drop this down to 20, right, gallons per minute. That's going to affect our flow, which is going to affect our speed in a hydraulic circuit. So here we go. Oh, that's much slower much much slower 20 gallons per minute much slower all right so what did we do we just changed uh the the supply side to affect our flow right we're just measuring flow we're not actually controlling anything here. we're just measuring it our gallons per minute 
we affected only the supply side, the flow, okay, the volume, and that affected our cylinder speed, right? It affected the PSI a little bit, but that's not where we're getting our pressure from, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and stop our circuit. Now, again, if we adjust our resistance, right, we reduce our resistance or, or, or increase or reduce. So here we're restricting, we're, we're, we're restricting or constricting our, uh, our flow. And that is where we will get our pressure from, okay? By restricting the flow. That's where we'll get our pressure. So here we have 20 gallons per minute. So we don't have a huge flow. If we raise this up, right, to its maximum, but we restrict that flow, our pressure is going to be very high, all right? And that's the part to understand. Our pressure is going to be very high. 357 PSI. Okay, our speed's increased, but it only goes as fast as it can go because it's got to clear this, this constricted um, controller right here. We're restricting the flow of that material, which will affect this speed. All right, these are very important principles um, that, that you need to understand. When you look at a hydraulic circuit, where, where's the energy from? Where's it coming from? How do you control it? How is it adjusted? These are factors, these are hydraulic fa factors and principles that you need to understand when working with the very first hydraulic circuit. It doesn't matter how simple the circuit is or how complex that circuit is. If you don't have these principles, you don't understand it, especially when you're new, you're going to struggle. Because you can have you can have a valve and it could be perfect. You're not getting you're not getting the pressure that you need, right? Um, and and your system you're not getting the speed that you need. Your gauges are, aren't reading the way you think that they should read, or the way the uh, the machine owner or the the OEM tells you it should read. And you're going to have to understand how the system, the theory of hydraulic uh, a hydraulic circuit works to understand how to troubleshoot it, to how to measure it, how to adjust it in order to get the, um, the expected results, all right? I hope this has been helpful, and uh, if you have any questions, put them down below. I'll answer them. Uh, love to answer them. First time here and you actually found this uh, helpful, subscribe, hit the bell. Let me know that you're interested, and I'll get you an update every time we put a video out. So until next time, this is Paul with the Logics Magazine. We'll talk to you guys later. Hey. Keep programming, my friends.